Ladies and a gentlemen, coming to you live from New York City, it is your man's not hot. Silent Mike here again with another coaching fix your form. If you want to get involved, we need a three reps at 70%. Email to askmikke at gmail.com. Here we go. Looks like we mostly got some squats. We got a nice little walkout. Not bad. We're already chilling. My man squat pretty good. He's hitting depth very easily. What I'd like to see in the upper body is to have you kind of shrug back and down. Um, it may be the angle, but it looks like you're a little bit shrugged up. And I just don't want to have those traps um, too uncomfortable, and we want to make a platform for that bar to lie. So if you shrug similar to a bench press, <clears throat> scapula retracted, down and back. Think about pulling your shoulders behind your back and downwards. It'll give us a perfect little wedge, especially with a low bar squat, just to put that thing right on the top of your rear delt. Overall, uh, the control, the form, uh, bar path, and depth all look very, very solid. Another piece that we always, every single person I think can continue to improve upon and get better is our breathing and bracing. Uh, every set, every rep I always do in the gym, I'm constantly trying to remind myself and figure out new ways to get tighter in my stomach and my lats. Uh, now again, the tighter that we can become between our hip and our shoulder, kind of our midline, as rigid as we can become there on all three lifts, any lift really, uh, even clean and jerk, snatch, overhead press, all that, the tighter we become, the more force we can produce with our legs and the more that force will transfer into the bar the way we want. Another squat, another really, really clean squat. Shout out to everybody sending in videos lately because shit's looking good. Overall, I'd say really, really solid. Uh, what I would say though is in the beginning, and I'm not, I don't want to get into the debate anywhere of whether you should break at the hips or the knees or simultaneous. But for you, my friend, I would recommend pushing into your knees just slightly more uh, in the beginning because right here you break at the hips for a while and then your knees almost separately. And I'd like both to move more at the same time. Uh, this will just allow uh, you to get a little bit deeper, a little bit cleaner. And it'll also allow as you're coming up, not to have that middle uh, hiccup that you can see right there where your quads lock out before your hips. On the squat, we want to lock our quads, our knees, excuse me, and our hips at the same time, pushing. Uh, I constantly think about pushing into the bar with my back and pushing the floor away from me. So overall, I'd say really, really solid. A1 form, 4.7 stars out of 5 stars. But from the beginning, let's have you push into your knees a little bit more. And again, for everyone, everyone, and I repeat everyone, let's get <clears throat> to keep on focusing on how tight we can squeeze our back and our lats and how tight we can brace and breathe into our stomach, sides, and low back in between each rep, on each rep for the entirety of every set. This is my first gentleman with a little bit of a walkout issue. Probably took you about seven steps with some knee bends and some hip bends. I'd like you to stand tall and strong and be a little bit more efficient. I would like two to three steps to get into your squat stance uh, at most. Overall looks really solid. Looks like you're maybe descending a little bit fast for you. Um, that one was maybe a little bit slower, but what happens is on the first two, you descend a little bit quick, you lose some tightness, and now your hips shoot up a hair early. Again, we want our hips and, and knees to move simultaneous. We want them working together so that that torso angle, um, where our body is relative to the floor, stays as much the same uh, as we can throughout the entire lift. We don't want as you see right there, the hips to fly up a little bit early or back and our chest to fold. Now, a torso angle for majority of people is going to be just fine. Having a little bit of a lean with a low back uh, or a low bar squat will be okay, but it's when the <clears throat> hips shoot up too early and the chest drastically uh, falls closer and closer to the ground on the way up or the way down uh, that we may come into some issues, uh, potentially uh, injuries, but mostly just inefficiencies in the squat and obviously to lift the most amount of weight to not get injured and to be able to handle the volume that we want to build the most amount of muscle we want the most efficient lift we can pretty decent walkout we got a little bit higher bar position overall fairly solid looks like you got some flat shoes on i'm not sure if you're struggling uh for depth with that ankle mobility uh weightlifting shoes may be an issue but we're looking like we're a little high uh, something I would recommend for people if you don't know what depth is, is turn your camera straight at you from the side uh, and raise the camera to your hip level. I know there's some safeties there, so you might have to move those. Lower the weight and do some pause squats. Uh, this will allow not only visually from the camera to see where depth is, 
pause squats and getting comfortable on the whole will allow you to progress over time and get more comfortable and more body awareness of where you should be or where depth is. Um, a lot of questions on, should I go ass to grass, low bar ass to grass, high bar ass to grass, should I do this, should I do that, should I try to cut my squat higher to lift more weight? Uh, and that's just a little bit too individual of a question, but I think whether your goal is hypertrophy or strength and powerlifting, that we for sure want to go to full range of motion, meaning hip crease below the knee. Uh, for hypertrophy, the longer range of motion you take a muscle through, obviously you're putting more stimulus on it, you're hitting different fibers, and over time you can build more muscle through that. And for powerlifting or strength, obviously that is just the standard. That's what you have to do to complete one rep. So for both parties, whoever or whatever your goal is, I recommend hitting full depth and a good way to find it is either have a friend there watching you from the side or put your camera there on the side uh, and lighten the load to hit some pause squats. My man here can squat. I can already tell by them thicky thighs. T-I-T-H-I-C-C-C-C-C-Y. You're listening to Silent Mike on the radio. Who invented the word thick? I'm going to put it out there that I invented the word thick. I may have not said the word first, but I'd be that I'll thick boy. It. Omar's, Omar says I popularized it. I would, I would actually say I invented it and the world popularized it for me. Sorry, bro. I missed your whole first rep. Let me try to help you out now. Uh, just complimenting them thicky thighs. You look like a squatter, my friend. It looks like you at least got a 700-pound squat in you in the future, and I'm not even being facetious. Really, really clean. Even in the slow-mo, when we got a slow-mo action, you can often see a lot of faults. I think it's a really clean squat, dude. My one cue or recommendation for you is uh, don't be afraid to push into your knees or think about the cue of pushing into your knees. Um, this will allow you to stay a little bit more upright. Your hips just move a, a hair funky. You keep nice and tight, good clean walkout, and just focus on pushing those knees. Uh, not only will you be able to activate your quads a little bit, but it will allow room for your hips to go straight down and a very clean bar path. Uh, uh, I guess from this angle at full speed, one more tip would be work on your timing. Um, kind of cadence, pacing, whatever you want to call it in the squat is very important. How fast you can control yourself, uh, uh, controlled chaos on the way down, uh, hit and rebound out of the hole with good timing will allow you to lift the most amount of weight. So it looks like you are a little tentative going into the hole. I'd say if you're comfortable, it looks like you're already handling a good amount of weight. Just be a little bit more comfortable out of the hole and try to hit it hard, get it in, and get it out. Back's tight. Looks again like everybody. We can always keep on working on our stomach getting tight. Um, I, I, you could, if you're not comfortable in the hole, you could try some pause squats or even a slightly narrower stance. Like I said, you do have some thicker thighs, my friend, uh, so you can get into it. Moving on to another squat here. What do we got, my friend? Squats straight into the mirror. Who's mad at it? I'm not mad at it. Overall, really, really good. Uh, this angle, it does look like you're a hair high. Uh, it could be the angle of the camera. That one was fairly deep. Um, but overall, my friend. I would say your squat is really, really solid. Um, sometimes people in the comments will say, Mike, you didn't see the butt wink on that. And what's actually happening is <clears throat> because of his belt and actually hitting depth, sometimes people lose a hair of tightness in the hole, but their actual butt or butt wink is not happening. Butt wink is when your pelvis is actually slightly rotating forward under load in the squat. And that's something we probably want to avoid just because you don't really want your sacrum, your pelvis, moving around under load. And that about wraps it up for this Fix Your Form. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to subscribe and give this thing a thumbs up. Comment below if you enjoy this type of footage. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. My rascals, peace.